Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And today we're having a look at uh, what's been going on on Norvis in the um, in, in the last in the last stream and in other things that have been going on over there. So one of the things that uh, Mark's been mentioned that he'd done is he said he'd upgraded the uh, stone belt, the stone brick belts for circuit production. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's this one over here for the green circuits, which are absolutely satisfied, or the one over here for red circuits, which also appears to be okay. But either way. While I was having a look to see what he'd been doing, I noticed that we're actually really quite short of some of the um, some of the more advanced circuits. So over here, for example, we've got we've only got nine and a half thousand in in, um, in in these where in uh, per warehouse, and and that's only just more than one train. So if this train goes off to have all of its circuits used up and then comes back to refill, that will pretty much empty these warehouses. And, and as you can see, there's not a lot coming through here. And so I've sort of been tracing this backwards. We've got the same problem with the blue circuits as well, although not quite as bad. We've got, given we've got 62 stacks of them in there. But I traced the problem back, and as you can, as you can see at the moment, there's the, the, the machines are running quite happily right now. They're, uh, we're producing lots and lots of the green circuits. They're being fed up here to produce the red circuits. But there was that gap down here that I was talking about, which is also affecting the blue circuit production. And that, if we watch this for a moment or two, we'll discover, I, if you look down here, we can see there's not very much um, copper in these warehouses. So right now, yes, there is a train here unloading quite quickly, but it's very nearly empty. There, there we go, that's the train emptied. So we've got 18 stacks per warehouse, 1,600. Well, that's a decent amount of um, decent amount of copper plate in there, but this is all getting churned through quite quickly. Um, and so if we look from here, so, and I and I, and there was when I looked earlier, there was a there was a gap in here, so there was there, we'd run out of cop we'd run out of copper plates. So if we look then all the way over up here, where the copper plates are actually coming from, we can see that in here, in these machines, in these warehouses, there these are practically full. There's a good 510 stacks in here. So it turns out we are producing the copper plate easily, fast enough for the rate we're getting through it. However, the trains are not capable of keeping of, um, of, of, of transporting it from here all the way down to here, uh, down here somewhere, fast enough. So whether we need to put in more trains or whether we need to have bigger trains or something needs to be something needs to be done about this because, uh, because we currently we do, we don't have enough uh, copper being brought through to keep the system satisfied. And there you go, it's, it's run out now. So there's probably a train on its way over. Um, potentially this one that's just left the uh, just left the smeltery and is bringing another however many stacks of copper over here, 160 stacks of copper over here so we will soon have some more copper but this this warehouse boom is empty and all of this now just streams up here these these three belts disappear immediately into I think they're probably going into the green circuit production you can see just how much copper is flowing through here um, and then we've got almost as much going in for the red circuit production up at the top so Yes, we um, we do we, we whilst we're making enough copper, we're not transporting it around fast enough. And I suspect the reason that this has become a problem all of a sudden is because it's kind of my fault um, because I stepped up the vulcanite production to 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 the extent that now the um, the module city up here is now churning out a quantity of the uh, of the tier three modules. It's not a huge number. You can see them dribbling out here. Uh, sometimes it goes a bit faster than that. Yeah, because there's, there's there's some of them coming through here, and making modules is very very uh, copper heavy. There's lot lots of it goes in at various different stages here. So we can so these these belts aren't moving at all, which kind of <laughs> feels like it put, put slightly puts a lie to what I've just said, but. I am pretty sure that producing modules is very, very copper hungry, and I've noticed that in the past. So if we look in here, for example, if we look at the recipe for the uh, copper production, uh, then it tells us that takes 460 copper ore uh, to make one tier three productivity module. So that's yeah, it's even even more hungry on that than it is on the vulcanite. So you can see why I'm saying that the uh, that we're going to be getting through a lot of a lot of copper in producing these modules. So yes, I guess that means it's sort of my fault because I dropped all of this vulcanite in here that's then pouring down here to go through here and. All of these, we're using lots and lots of circuits to make these make these tier three modules. We're using also using even more, just as many circuits to make the tier two modules. You can see all these inserts grabbing them away merrily down there. And again, for the tier one modules down here, again we're using lots and lots of uh, the uh, green circuits and the electronic components, which I suspect probably use uh, copper. Let's have a look. They come from down, 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 down here. Oh no, they don't. Oh no, they do. They do. 
no, no, they don't use copper. So, okay, the electronic components don't use copper, but all the other, basically everything else that goes into these modules feels like it uses a certain amount of copper. So, yeah, we're ripping through crazy quantities of copper because we've started making these tier, tier 3 modules because we have a supply of vulcanite. So, um, sorry, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is potentially going to be a problem. I think the, the answer to it is probably going to be... Well, we could put in more trains because we, there's always, there's room for another one to be parked in here. So potentially there's room to have more trains in the system, but I don't really want to risk overloading it. Um, do we have? We've got we've got we do have a, probably have a stacker down here. Yes, we have a stacker down here for the trains coming in. So we could potentially have quite a lot of them queued up here, ready to drop copper off as quickly as possible. See, here's a second one coming in almost immediately uh, to drop some more off. Uh, and so that one has got in before we've run out here, but. You know, we're still churning through it at such a rate, and we've only got uh, 43, we've got 43,000 now uh, red circuits to show for it. So that's getting a bit healthier now. Well, that's that's almost a train and a half in these warehouses. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a lot of copper that we're getting through. So the system up here, whilst it, it's producing it fast enough, we're not able to transport it around in, uh, fast enough. So we either need to make longer trains, as I say, or possibly um, have just have more trains available for transporting it around. It's, it's a problem that's going to sort itself out in a little while, once we start to back up on the number of circuits we've pro uh, uh, modules we've produced. But that's going to be quite a long time, um, because there is a lot of potential down here. I don't know. It's quite possible there is some system set up to stop this running when this gets to, when this, this gets to a certain number of modules. We've got 1,300 of them at the moment, which is not remotely close to a train's, low, train's worth. Um, I Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, let's, let's have a quick look. Okay, up here where we're making the mod modules, there is a belt that says stop producing them if there's 2,000 somewhere. And that's on this green network, which currently just has a tick on it. And it's connected in down here where we're monitoring for how many red circuits. We're monitoring for having more than 60,000 red circuits, more than 90,000 green circuits out or and less than 2,000, or less than 2,000, I don't know. This is set up rather strangely. I, I, oh, I see, it's connected up to, it's hooked up to the the green network coming from here. So the idea is that it will own, that it will output a tick if there is, as long as there's enough um, green circuits and red circuits on the overall system, and then cause this to stop under no circumstances whatsoever so yeah i don't i don't think that's set up properly um we don't seem to have anything limiting the number of uh, productivity threes we're going to be producing uh, apart from we're st going to stop when there's a train load in these warehouses um and then another strip there so yeah uh that's going to be quite a long time but it's going to be this i mean we're going to need a lot of these modules at some point in the future the basically the question is is our infrastructure capable of dealing with it at the moment and if not do we want to try limiting the modules a bit more or do we want to increase the infrastructure so we can, so it can handle all of this uh i'm not sure what the answer to that is going to be uh because that's going to be put filling filling these up with um 40 stacks each of uh, of these tier 3 modules is going to be a lot of resources and I don't know whether we want to I don't know how keen we are on um, on tying up quite that much in there we should, but we'll, we'll see so Mark has also been doing a few other things on Norvis he says he's um, improved the um, improved the concrete production because as you can look, look at the rate that's flowing out we're using up a lot of concrete um, and so we're now making a lot of concrete as well so that means we've got a steady a steady trickle of stone coming in which is um, an acceptable amount we've it means this belt is moving reasonably quickly we're getting through quite a bit of stone here um, it's not a problem at the moment we are capable of producing this sort of level of stone and keeping it running but it's uh, it's it is certainly a drain on it there. We're also doing the same sort of thing with stone bricks. We've got a lot flowing through here. But at the moment, we've got a blue belt coming in that splits off into a red belt and a yellow belt. So that is capable of keeping up with the supply that goes on around here, at least. Uh, and we're only using about half of that red belt as well. So whilst this is a lot of belts, a lot of resources flowing in here, it's not necessarily problematic yet. The iron, the amount of iron coming in is manageable. So. Mark says he's done it without producing, without moving it off to a town, which is, well, quite literally what he has done here. Uh, we have the concrete being made by all of these machines. I don't know exactly what he's done to speed it up this time. It might be the speed modules in the machines. It might be that he's put in some more of them or some more input of stone. I'm, I'm not sure. But the point is that we have now a, um, 
a decent supply of concrete coming out, although in currently insufficient, but we are using up a lot of the resources that are coming in here. So if we look over here at the other end of the belt, so where we're feeding them in, this is where you look to see if things are being problematic. And at the moment, you can see that these belts coming in are moving in that sort of jerky stop starty way that they do when you're using quite a lot of the resources from them, but certainly not all of it by any means. So we are okay at the moment uh, for throughput. We, we have enough these belts now they've been upgraded to uh, yellow to blue belts although there's some red in the middle here so uh, never mind um, <laughs> we have enough throughput on these belts that the system is going to be satisfied by it and we're not starving the bus so that's probably is, is, is right now it is okay uh, stone bricks on the other hand um, the bottom half of this belt is moving constantly the top half is jerking so we're we're at more than 50% usage of this belt but not at 100% so again this is probably okay for now so if we wanted more um, more concrete, then the next the next step would be to move off to a town somewhere else, put it maybe down here because there's a nice convenient gap and it's not too far away, and then have another unloading station somewhere on here. So you'd, you'd have a train would come in, dump out a load of concrete, it would then be poured onto, onto the bus at the rate it was required. So we'd be able to get a little bit more through that way, but at the moment the system seems to be okay. I wonder where all that concrete is getting used. So it flows down onto a belt here, it can go both ways, but all of the stuff that's being used is going this way. Um, a fair amount of it is going up here to be turned into uh, oh, warehouses. That might be at least partly my fault because I, um, I had a bit of an accident with warehouses earlier and uh, made far too many of them <laughs> um, and put far too many of them into a rocket. So that was another thing that Mark tidied up. He's pulled them back out of the rocket. And I, but I think, judging by the way this is... Um, uh, what's going on here? Let's see. We've got uh, a full row of them there. This is okay. This is running when there's less than 200. We have 200 uh, in that warehouse, in that in that um, in that storage chest, um, and none stored anywhere else by the looks of it. So at the moment we're just restocking this to get it back up to the point where we're ready to make another one when when we need some more. Uh, oh, apparently we used one. Oh no, no, we're building up the probably trying to build up the buff. Where are these going? Oh, they're being unloaded onto this belt that goes up here to presumably allow us to make logistics warehouses. Right, so that's why, yes, we're getting through crazy amounts of concrete because we're trying to make a large number of logistics warehouses. So we're trying to make up presumably 100, yeah, 100 of each colour of warehouse um, because, I mean, they're useful to have um, and sometimes you request them. So at the moment, we, yeah, we've got 3, 7, 12, 80... 100. So we're working on trying to build up enough warehouses to make one of each of the coloured where uh, 100 of each of the coloured warehouses. And so that is pulling through enormous quantities of concrete. But this is building up a buffer because you never you never really go in and say yes I would like 100 blue warehouses please. So I think this is going to be a bit of a frenzy for now. We're going to be using loads and loads of concrete until this get until all those builds are done. And then the whole system will calm down and we'll be able to produce it and then, and then everything will be okay. Now interestingly I've noticed that we seem to have um, almost stopped there. So now I think we've got over here, yes, we now have a, a buffer of concrete starting to build up. So the system is all calming down. I think, so it's, because we've suddenly used an enormous burst of it, it makes the, the whole system go, oh no, and struggle a bit to try and keep up. But now that, but once things calm down a bit, once we've filled up all these buffers, I think that's going to be absolutely fine. We don't need to worry about that too much. A more exciting thing that Mark has been doing is improving the, um, the, 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 ore, the core fragmentation, the core fragment processing systems. So as you've um, you've seen a million times before, we've got got the trains down here unloading. They're, they're queuing up here to to unload the core fragments. That's how fast we're getting through them. So I'll pull in here, unload the core fragments. They go up into the into the warehouse here. They get passed out into all these pulverizers, which crush them down into all of these resources that we need. And they've got actually they're all on tier two um, productivity modules at the moment. I don't know whether we should upgrade these to tier three or not because you've seen how expensive the tier threes are. But this is where all our resources come from, so maybe it'll be worth it. I'm, I'm not sure. But so before, where we had a stack of um, a load of uh, warehouses up here and some cunningness with uh, filtered uh, loaders and things to pass pass the resources around between them and get them out onto the belts. Now we've switched over to this belt system here, which should be better for UPS and better for throughput, and also is enormous and somewhat crazy. <clears throat> so the way this works is, as the resources flow up, they get split out by these filter splitters along here into all of their different um, subcomponents. So as you can see, they're, they're being spread out into, so the iron ore comes out here and the copper and, and so on and so on and so on. Like that, there we go. Then up here, we've got a, a set of belts that we'll then, they're then fed onto. So for example, the iron will come up here and then go through this splitter to be joined onto this belt. But then we've got some more splitters here to sort of, to spread it out a bit between the three belts because there is too much coming along here. If we look all the way over here at the end of it, 
there's too much here to go onto one belt so having it spread out between the three of them means we get a little bit more um, we, we've got a little bit more throughput available then with all of these uh, the the system here looks more horrible than it is we've got just got underground belts passing it through to get it between between the different um, systems and then loaders to drop it into these storehouses and then push it straight out the other side so in the cases of something like iron or iron copper or stone where we're using it up at quite a rate it comes in the site one side here just flows straight back out the other side so that's quick and easy it just just goes straight through simple uh, for something like rare metals, where we've got more than we know what to do with, it flows in one side and then it goes, oh, and it flows out the bottom instead. So these are all set up to only run uh, when there's more than 10,000 in the warehouse, which, uh, in the storehouse, which as you can see there is. And these ones, are, again, exactly the same. There is less than 10,000, so it's, it's going going back out that side. And then that all flows down here, goes into, um, into these... Uh, recycling facilities and then turn all of that excess um, rare metal in this case into into landfill we then just to be honest we're then just sort of stockpiling it which is a bit naff I have to admit but for now it's it's a way of getting rid of dealing putting it somewhere I suppose uh, it's not my favorite way of dealing with um, overflow of stuff but there's not really a lot else we can do and at least we're not destroying it that's all I can say. It's just a shame we're not using more uh, rare metals for, well, anything at all. We're using a little bit for making blue circuits. We're using a little bit for making um, uh, the circuit board substrates for going up into space. But neither of those are enough. Of a, oh, and I think we're using some for make lithium as well. But none of those are enough of a load to make a significant dent on what's coming out of here. The, I, f I feel like this part of the game is a little imbalanced in that the uh, core mining, core, core fragment processing produces ridiculous amounts of rare metal compared to what it produces of everything else and compared to the demand on it. But, yeah, what can you do? <clears throat> Apparently, just turn it all into landfill. That's what you can do. Mark has been expanding the uh, southern defences. So now, again, more, more, more of a big push along here. So we've got this massive long wall going all the way across here and then up here. Um, he doesn't seem to have really gone for minimising the amount of wall used. He's just gone, well, let's just build a massive wall. But because he's completely covered this area with um, power and robot ports, I guess it's not particularly difficult to put in a war like this because you just tell the bots to do it and then come back a week later and it's uh, it's probably happened so expanding out down here has meant he's been able to claim some more uh, core, core mine drill uh, core, core seams so there's one there one there one there and uh, he said four so maybe no, it's not that one we've had that for ages oh and one down there and each of these is exactly the same system you've, you've seen you've seen this one before it's a core mining drill it goes into a station the station, uh, we collect all the core fragments in the station. When the station fills up, a train comes along, grabs them, takes them away to be processed. And we've also got the air filter system here as well, where you've got this little thing here where it drops off the air, clean air filters, picks up the dirty ones, takes them away, and then the clean ones go around here through the system. <laughs> with Interestingly, we've got one belt doing both of it along here, which is, I mean, it seems to be fine because there's plenty of space on the belt even after both of them. Um, but then that gets split out over here. So, yeah, it, it, it's a simple design and it basically just works. So, yeah. Why not? Just have, just yeah. We'll just have lots and lots of those um, wherever we find a core seam. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the next expansion would be. Maybe, maybe to put a wall across. I suppose you could put one across here. That's short, and then across here because that's a fairly short bit. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much area he wants to. How much area he wants to clear out, and how many core mines we actually need for the for this. I mean, obviously, the answer is more because all of these are running flat out, and we are still. I believe we are still using the mines for all resources as well. So up here we've got an iron mine. There is a train sat in it. It's not going anywhere. Um, to be honest, I don't know what proportion of our um, our resources are coming from core mining at the moment. Maybe I'll try and work that out at some point. Finally, Mark has decided it's time to go off to a Vitamalange planet. So he's told us to uh, make sure we're, we, we've, we've, add, don't, we've asked for everything we're going to want from down here. So presumably down here. I think uh, Big Rid down here is this is the uh, this is the planet that's going to have that has all of our um, uh, is going to be providing us with Vitamalange. So over here we've got uh, requested chest pulling in stuff. He's loading up his rocket with well. All of the bits and pieces you need to get a fledgling base up and started. And this rocket is now complete, well, virtually full. There's a little room for a little bit, a few more um, blue belts and solar panels and, and little bits and pieces here and there. But basically, this rocket is what is kind of full. So I think at some point fairly soon, he's going to head off to uh, a big grid and uh, get and get started over there with um, with producing all the, all the bits and pieces he needs. Now, looking at the supplies he's got here, this looks like... Um, I don't see any sort of mining and processing supplies, so I think this is this is what he's going to need in order to get up the free power generation, the um, 
uh, defenses and defenses this is against biters because it's, it's going to have biters because it's a vital melange planet and against stuff that falls from space so it's, it's to get this is to get him sort of bootstrapped and started and be able to defend a little outpost and then once he's done that he can then sort of push out a bit further maybe set up some uh, core mining drills and probably knowing what Vulcanite was like in my last playthrough probably also set up some normal mines as well and just get the systems running oh she's got quite a lot of pulverizers in here so maybe that maybe this is also the uh, um, and some fuel refineries I uh, the pulverizers make me think maybe he has planned a little bit further ahead, but I don't see any core mining drills in here or or normal miners. So I suspect he's just he's got the stuff that will fit in the rocket, and then he's going to send over another rocket once he's got himself established. So I guess I better send the uh, the spaceship back over here for him to, for him to use and to get ready to head out again. Um, I imagine this is a system of uh, yeah, this is presumably a system that says I want so many of each of these things. So that is the that's the the free power um, blueprint. That's uh, meteor def oh, that's meteor defense building, I suspect. A ammo building. This is going to be. I'm not sure what that is. So, but yeah, you got the got all these long here to set it up and and and, and pull all the uh, the bits and pieces into the rocket. So let's have a quick look at Big Red and see what he's what sort of things he's letting himself in for. Big Red, here here you are. So over here we have yes, this is a Vitamelange planet, and that means it's guaranteed to have biters because Vitamelange and biters are they're both sort of organic things, so they kind of come together, I guess. Um, I don't know where he's planning to land, but there's in the, in the middle seems to make sense. There's lots of water available. There's lots and lots of um, core seams around here, and uh, some reasonably sizable patches of vitamin land if he decides he wants to use those. Uh, further out, this is been, so he's done he's done a little bit of the sort of idle scanning of, of the um, of, of the uh, of the planet, uh, and this is this is done auto automatically. You can you can tell because it's a nice neat circle, well a neatish circle, but this isn't the entire planet because it, which you can tell because it's a bumpy edged circle. So out here, the uh, the patches of Vitamelange are a bit denser if you go further away, but so are the bite so are the so are the bite nests. So personally, I would go with the easy easy way and start off in the middle, and then say, well, we've got quite a lot of core seams around here. I'll try and claim maybe a chunk of area like this, and get started from there, and then push out further later on once we've got the better weapons and we can just bombard it from from space with uh, with whatever weapons we want to use. Um, as I say, lots of water, which is nice because that's very, very useful. There's probably going to be something that this planet doesn't have, though. So it's very short of copper. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Um, it's got iron in some quantity, coal, oil, stone, vitamin lunch. We shall find out in a, in a, in a week or two what the, um, what the vitamin lunch processing recipe is like and see how Mark gets on with it, I guess. <laughs> So back on Norvis again. Uh, Tristan has also been working away on Norvis while he probably while he waits for things to happen out on Njord. Uh, and one of the things he's done is increase the amount of buffer space for uh, for all the belts we're producing. Because we've we've noticed that whenever I want to order out a load of belts for my planet, it's usually I usually find out that Mike has got in there first and ordered several thousand of them and completely depleted the buffers of belts in here. So this system now is because it's stockpiling them in larger quantities will hopefully mean that we've now got a lot more belts available. And so even when uh, Mike goes in and claims thousands of them there'll still be some left over for me as well i suspect the same is true the other way around because i can tend to go in and ask for a couple of thousand of them as well so i can't entirely blame mike or at least not fairly but i'm, I'm going to anyway uh tristan says he's put tier three uh productivity and speed modules onto the logistics system which means he's got trains that bring them over to here unloading them into into a um into into a chest here and they can then be taken over to wherever they're needed so at the moment we've got actually I take back my earlier comments about not having very many um, tier 3 productivity modules because we actually seem to have a huge number of them because there's, oh, okay, these trains are nearly empty, but there is, uh, and there's, there's 500 in here. Okay, so we've not got quite as many as I thought over here. I thought this, for some reason I thought this train was nearly full. Uh, it turns out no. Um, but then he's also put in a speed three drop um, station as well over here, and this is this, the point of this is it means it brings the um, the modules a bit closer to where they're going to be needed, where they're going to be want, where they're going to be taken from, so the bots aren't going to be flying quite so far when when you do a big upgrade. Uh, so yeah, we've got we've got those over here. We will eventually, if we ever make a train load of, of uh, speed three modules, then they'll be brought over to here as well. Um, I, say, I say that in a sort of a rather iffy way because I mean they're they're, they're also quite expensive. Uh, where are we looking? Here we are. And so far we've got uh, none of them. Okay, I don't know where those have all gone. Then maybe they've been nicked manually. Um, I I have no, have no idea. Maybe somebody's used them all up. He's also put um, belts onto the uh, stock stock display thing here. Um, they're 
rather low at the moment, as you can see. Well, actually, no, they're, no they've, they've caught up quite well. The blues are still, still have some way to go. But we've got decent numbers of red and decent numbers of yellow in there. And the blues are probably gradually climbing. Seems to have a little bit of a shortage of oil, but not too bad. We are very, very short on um, iron ore and copper plates. Why we No, we're not short on copper plates. That's obviously not been hooked into the system properly. Because when we looked earlier, there was 500,000 over there in each... Uh, sorry, there's 500 stacks in each warehouse. So we this, this has clearly not been linked up properly. Iron we has a number, but it's rather low, so we seem to be kind of short of that. And iron ore as well. So is there really that much of a problem with iron? Uh, let's have a look over here. Um, that's steel. Iron. Uh, well, we've got almost... We've got about four trains worth in, in here, so... It's not amazing, but it's not too. It's not suffering too much. I'd say uh, I feel like. I mean, that's that's like a third full, and the uh, and 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 then the display over here is um, a bit less than the third. it. Okay, it's, it's, it's vaguely reasonable. We we don't have an enormous amount of iron, but we're not in we're not an absolute crisis level of it yet. This iron ore though is a bit of a concern. Now I noticed that the iron processing over he here here here, uh, we seem to have plenty of iron ore available at the moment. Um, these these warehouses are all virtually well. They're nearly nearly full. They're pretty close to full, um, and the iron is flowing out at a at a reasonable rate. There doesn't seem to be any problems with that. Um, but it could be that we whatever iron mines we have scattered around the planet are getting absolutely hammered, or it could just be they haven't been. Ah, oh, no, I think it's just they haven't. This one at least certainly this one hasn't been linked into the um, into the uh, logistics system because the the, the green ca green and red cables don't come all the way up here. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's that's why that's why there appears to be a shortage of iron um, on the system because we haven't linked it in properly. Okay, that's fair enough. I do think that perhaps this uh, display system over here should also include uh, circuits. So we should have green, red, and blue circuits on here to give us an idea of how much supply we have of those because that's again something else that we're going to have that we seem to have some slight problems with. So having this to look to glance at and see where the problems are would be quite useful for that one. So I'll suggest that to Tristan. He can add those in for next week. He says he's oh, and he's, oh part of the belt thing. He's also beaconed and moduled everything. Oh, I see. So he's um, crammed everything full of speed modules because presumably you can't put you, you presumably can't use um, uh, productivity modules for making making belts because they're a, a final product thing. So um, yeah, he's, he's just he's just filled everything up with speed modules so they get made a bit quicker and put presumably an absolutely enormous load on the uh, on on the on the iron supply. This is one of those things that again should really be pulled off into a um, a separate town somewhere. But it takes I guess it takes quite a lot of different inputs. So it's not it's not just lots and lots of iron coming in. It also needs the motors. Um, which we're, we're making separately, and it apparently needs oh, no, no, not that, not that one over here. We can we can see we're also using steel and blue circuits and uh, low density structures. Low density structures, really, of one of the more very very advanced belt types. It's green circuit, blah, blah blah blah. All of these things they're all going into the circuit system, the production system. So yeah, circuits are kind of pricey. There's a lot of different inputs, and so it is quite handy to have them on the bus. But on the flip side, they're also going to be pulling all of the uh, iron through the bus. But then on the other other hand, I don't know how many hands I've got at this point, um, the, they are right down at the end of the bus, and that means that even if they are pulling all of the iron th uh, off the off the bus, everything else that needs needs iron over here will have been able to grab it first. So maybe it's not a problem? I, I, don't, I don't know. Seems to be running okay at the moment anyway. And we do have productivity modules in uh, in these machines over here, the ones that are making the, uh, the gears because they're an intermediate one. <laughs> So, while I'm talking about Tristan, let's go over and have a look at Njord, because that's where he's also spent some of his time, and is, is his sort of big main thing. He's continued with his expansionary policy with the uh, the core mining drill, so has expanded out further, got more core miners, and, and got them all linked up. One thing I've noticed, which I find mildly interesting, um, is that Tristan tends to put in the core miners with long belts, this one isn't quite apparently it isn't finished, but long belts feeding them up to 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 stations where several of them will merge together. So um, whereas I whereas with the ones I've been putting out on Agnea, I've just been putting in a station right next to each uh, each core mine. I don't know which is better or worse. There's um, I don't I don't have a particularly strong feeling either way. Um, I guess that the the way I do it means you use more rail. The way Tristan does it means you use more belt. Um, I, yeah, I say I don't. I don't think it really matters either way. You'll still get the same level of throughput. Um, there's some suspicious gaps in his uh, in his rail lines. Is that oh, there's, there's some landfill has been put in there because there was a puddle, and so and uh, 
because he's doing it all by um, uh, by, by uh, robot from distant, distantly, he then needs to go back and put that in afterwards. So, okay. That's a work in progress is basically what I'm saying there. And so he's been continuing with the expansion down here. So we've now got... Um, these These are very, very sort of weird looking strips of infrastructure. So as, as I covered before, we've got the... Um, the this is going to be a core, core drop, I assume. Um, yes, it's going to be a core drop. So all of that will then flow down here, through here, and be pulverized down over here. And then we're sending ah, then we're sending yes, we're sending all the uh, all the core fragments up. All the, uh, the core fragments will be disposed of somewhere. There'll be a belt for it. I I I, I, I don't know which one it is. It might be this one around the bottom, or it might not be. And the stone as well. The holmanite will come up here, and then he's got similar to the way I've been doing it on um, on Agnea. He's then got a system here. Which will prioritise the holmanite that's coming through from the core fragment processing first, and then top it up with any, with the stuff that's coming from from a normal holmanite mine. Um, that can then be pulverised down again here, and then we've got belt after belt after belt after belt to bring it up and round to uh, the next stage, which is um, turning into the holmium chloride. I think it was. So he's going to need to work. He's going to need to put in an area that makes enormous quantities of the hydrogen chloride uh, to, to, to keep that to keep these these machines happy. As you can, uh, oh, and, and lots of anion exchange beads as well, um, and then he's got. Goodness, oh, okay, so we've got a, we've got a, yeah, he's put in a feedback system here that's pulling out the uh, the actual holmium chloride to take it off to the next step, and then looping back round with the um, uh, with the the byproducts that need to be put back in again, because as you see, we the hot the um, you, you sometimes you get crushed holmanite back out, sometimes you get anion exchange beads back out again. So those are being fed back around straight back into the machine. So it's got very very local um, feedback here, which means the uh, you don't need as much belt space for the for taking stuff away and then if you, as if you're sorting it afterwards and then feeding it all back in again. So that's good. <clears throat> I don't know. If, okay, so the, because and because these are all 50% probability of, of giving the thing back again, uh, having a loader on either side will probably actually be about right for getting the uh, getting the ingredients in. So I think that should 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 work. I guess we'll see how it goes once it gets once it gets it up and running. Then over here we've got um, yeah we've got the same sort of thing happening multiple times over. So we can have lots of different but lots of belts of the um, of the holmium chloride coming out up here and all of the dirty holmium water as well. And then he's then he's just going to loop those back round again down down once again for the next step of the production, then the next step and so on until he's finally got the holmium ingots out right at the end. This reminds me a little bit of the way I was building up my um, my towns in Dyson Sphere program, actually, with the, a, a, a long line of one of one type of machine, then a long line of the next one, a long line of the next one, and so on, all the way across. It's a nice way of doing things. It, um, it, it yeah, it gives you lots and lots of um, space for expansion. Um, and he, oh yes, and he's filled it up with uh, productivity modules as well, so that's going to give him an, a, a boost boost to the productivity. I mean, we're going to get a decent, amount, hopefully, get a decent amount of holmium coming out of the other side. So that looks that looks good. It's uh, obviously not finished yet, but work in progress as as, as ever. <laughs> he also right. We also had a bit of a confusion with the with the imacite. So um, we were aware that the imacite. Let, 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 let's have a look at this. So I actually get so I actually get the um, the, the facts right here. So in, when you dig up imacite out of a um, I, I, with, with a uh, with a quarry miner, you get you get imacite out. You can then potentially. So we ah yes we 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 then what the first stage of dealing with the imacite is crushing it, which produces lots and lots of sand. And so we're thinking this would be a really good thing for Tristan to start doing on this planet because he was as we've discussed before he gets crazy crazy amounts of sand in the holmium processing to make the uh, in in making the. Um, the hydrogen chloride. So if you could, if you could dig up the imacite, crush it, take key and keep the sand, and then send the crushed imacite on to the next for the next step, that'd be fantastic because it would give them a great supply of sand. And hope and normally the way these things work is the more the more you process something, the denser it gets, and therefore the more you can fit in each delivery cannon capsule. Um, so for example, this raw imacite, you can put 50 of it into an into a delivery cannon capsule. So we then had a look at crushed imacite. It turns out, unfortunately, for some reason, unlike it feels like basically every other um, product in the game, unfortunately you can't send the uh, crushed imacite by around by delivery cannon. You then need to process it with sulfuric acid to make the immersium sulfide, then go through nitric acid and, and so on. And it, it, at that point, it's just not worth it. You can't you can't re you, you can't ship the um, imacite out in a nice convenient way um, after crushing it. You have to ship it out as the as crystal, which is a bit of a shame. So that basically means these these are now being shot out to uh, Taishikuten by the delivery cannons, and then on Taishikuten they're then being crushed, pulverized, appropriate, dealt with appropriately. And I'm not actually sure what's being done with the sand from there. Um, let's have a quick look, actually, because I'm kind of curious. Maybe we should be setting this to send the sand back to uh, Njord, where it can then be used again. Uh, 
So the the sand that's produced by so here we go. Here's all of that um, uh, imosite that you, all those imosite crystals that Tristan has just been producing. They're coming up here. They're being processed into the uh, as discussed, and as discussed, that's producing quite a lot of sand. Sand then flows down here, and it looks like we're just dispo sending it down this disposal belt down all the way down here. Um, probably into this warehouse here, where we're then turning it into glass and shipping it to Norvis. Um, how much have we got in here? Uh, not a lot. Okay, so we're getting through the sand about as quickly as it's coming in. Um, but we're turning all of that into glass, which is using up some of the vulcanite, which is okay, I guess. I don't really care too much about that either way. And then, yeah, just shipping it off to Norvis in the form of glass. So it might be better to put in another delivery cannon down here and another signal receiver and so on and start shipping the um, the all of this sand by priority over to um, back over to Njord for Tristan. Um, he seems to be okay for sand at the moment um, because Agnair is shipping a lot of it over to him. But I'm also fairly aware that at some point um, he's going to massively increase his uh, production of holmium and therefore he's going to need a lot, lot more sand than he does at the moment. So that's going to be absolutely voracious appetite for it so having the uh, the sand from here being shipped over there as well probably be a good thing I think um, because uh, we're going to be sh shipping it somewhere by delivery cannon in the f either in the form of sand or the form of glass so we might as well send it to the place that needs the sand rather than shipping glass to Norvis and having Norvis shipping sand to uh, uh, to Njord so yeah that's something I should probably do in a, in a, in a, in a future episode but this means we are now producing small quantities of these imosite plates and also the imosite crystals, which are being sent down to these delivery cannons here and sent off to wherever they're needed, which is mostly um, Norbit, I think. Although a little bit of it is probably a little bit of it is probably also needed by uh, by Norvis itself. So you get yeah Norvis and Norbit at the moment. And I think that really is going to be it now. So that's been. Um, yeah, we, we've had had a look at quite a few of the planets. I did have a oh, I had a minor thing. Well, one final thing that I will briefly mention because I felt a little bit silly about it at the time was out on Talos. Um, you know, as they, they they always say that the um, there's nothing quite so permanent as a temporary fix. So um, yeah, over here I had a temporary fix of put it, of unloading this um, uh, fit filtration plant into this chest. Um, and then I wasn't doing anything with it because I was a bit of a muppet. So I realised, uh, fortunately, Mark had been playing a little bit ahead and uh, in uh, leaving the game running while he was designing stuff, and it turned out this filled up completely, uh, which meant that then the uh, the filter stopped flowing, which meant the biters came in and ate my entire outpost. Fortunately, that didn't happen in the in the real world, as it were. Uh, so I was able to come along here in, in in the nick of time and put in this belt round here that takes just takes the ore away and puts it into the the rest of the system over here and allowing it to be dealt with just like everything else. And and that's worked pretty well. Generally happy with that. Um, or am I? Wait, what? There seems to be another problem here. We've got too much copper and this is not shipping it out. Why are you not shipping the copper out? Interesting. We, uh, we've got a bit of a copper jam over here. Um, so this is receiving the signal from Norvis. Um, I assume, which is showing negative of all of those things, except for some reason the copper. So apparently, uh, where is that? That's okay. It looks like it's, in, it's sort of in the corner of the. Um, yes, here we go. It's, it's basically where I expected. And this is this is the um, this is the co new copper smeltery. There is a there is a, ch a chest here to receive it, um, and if we flick over, to, we can see it's currently empty. There's a minus one on there. Um, ah, I see the problem. These have not been connected together properly. <laughs> so if I um, if I put in a cable here like this, so they're all actually wired together, then we should see you almost immediately. We'll probably get the um, uh, copper starting to arrive by delivery cannon, and then we can pump it out into here, and yep, like just like that, and start getting rid of it. So now, if we have a look back out on Taishaku Talos again, we'll see that here we go. Now we're now we're starting to fire it out. We're starting to cook, we're cooking it in the. Um, in, in the furnace and now that that'll allow this to start getting pulled through again and yeah so that that backlog that was all the way along here has now all disappeared into onto this onto this belt here pull through a bit more again and then that allows the stone can flow out into here to be to again turned into sand and will turn into glass um, and yeah so this this is now fixed it's just going to take a few a few cycles and a few delivery cannon capsules to churn through all of that copper 
I say all of that copper. There's not a huge amount of it. And okay, there we go. Problem solved. But I do need to remember to do this in the real game. <laughs> so that really is the last thing I'm going to talk about today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also, please check out the um, the channel sponsor. That's Trefoil.be. They run Factorio and Minecraft and a few other game servers. They're very nice, nice and cheap. And if you and if you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you'll get 20% off your first month as well. So even better. Uh, come back uh, on Monday when you'll be able to see me going through and fixing all the things I've just been talking about because uh, there's a little few things in there and Monday is our uh, our Factorio stream night. Tuesday there may well be a Factorio video. We shall see how busy I am, um, whether I've got time to make one. Um, Wednesday is the XCOM stream night. So XCOM, uh, things are going generally well there. Come along, have a soldier named after you. Watch them get horribly, horribly killed. <laughs> Thursday is GTA uh, stream. Uh, no, sorry, GTA video night. There's a. Uh, I think there'll probably be. There's definitely one coming out for non-supporters there because it was last week's supporter video. Uh, and hopefully I'll have made another one for supporters by then as well. And on uh, and that brings us all the way back around to Friday and Saturday when there's going to be the Factorio update videos again. The week after I won't be around because I'll be on holiday. But um, they may, they'll. I don't know what's going to be happening then. We shall, we shall see. <laughs> so, lots, always lots to look forward to on the channel. Uh, I hope to see you for the uh, back to back for the next videos and for everything like that. So, as ever, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.